that five people or uh, six people talk on every question. That way we'll be able to you know cover more and more questions. Plus we'll get more interesting answers as well. No, I agree. Uh, what was the question you said? Can I just uh, I'm checking on the WhatsApp. Uh, okay, the, the question right now is if you have if you get any superpower, if you get a chance to get any superpower, what would that be? Um, where is where are those questions? I can't see like those three. No, no, not the, those questions. I, I, you can just write in the chat box. I'll share the list as well. Somebody, there's other group as the second group. Somebody shared the list. I think. Yes, oh man, group. yeah, the group one and two. Yeah, I get confused between these two. Yeah, so I can you to, just? I, I, I just share. <laughs> can the you list. just uh send uh send now like? Yeah, sure. I can no. just, just give me a second. I'm just setting up my inter everything setup. Yeah. So I just take two minutes for that. And the, for right now, the question is, if you get a chance to get any superpower, what would that be? Can anybody just write in chat box that question and you can just prepare your answers and then we can go ahead. Like I am just looking um, Naveshman, good morning. Um, uh, uh, yeah, no, what I thought like this thing was, I think like, um, the zoom chat right it has like a pin option that the host can do where you can pin a comment where it'll always be visible like even if someone joins the meeting later so okay. uh see if like just like google it like if it's possible if you can pin the question then like people who join later they don't need to keep you know you, you don't have to keep getting asked like again again what the question being discussed is right they can just check the chat and see the okay. current question being discussed i just have to figure that out oh um, yeah they definitely yeah. Have to that out yeah, it's make it convenient <laughs> Can you just write in the chat box? Somebody can write in the chat box, like just a question, and then I can just go. Uh, I I'll just set up and then we start with the chat. Like we can get yeah. yeah thank you so much, Doctor uh, Samia. Thank you. So we'll just go ahead. Just think about your answers. What would that superpower be? And then we can have some interesting answers. Just give it. Yeah, me. definitely. It's a teamwork. Yeah. Just let us know what we we should do so that you know uh, it's easy for everyone. Yeah, just go ahead with the answer. Just think your answer. What would that superpower be if you ever get a chance? Doing a mock interview with one of my friends because he has an interview soon. So he just requested me if I could do the interview, and my dog was barking at that time. So I just I just have to find a solution to that as well. So yeah, should we go with the answer that like somebody wants to answer what super part they want to have? Yeah, Dr. Bushra, we can definitely, next question we can diff, uh, discuss about the conflict we had with a colleague. Yeah, that is again a good question, though we have discussed that, but still we can discuss again. So yeah. Uh, Arsha, do you have the three questions for today? One is the superpower. Do you have, like, what are the other two? So, like, one question will take the conflict one. Like, if you mm -hmm. have a conflict with a colleague, how you handle that. Okay. So, right. And the third question we can think so far. Uh, like, I can just think, or you can just think and give a suggestion. We can just use that question as well. And sure. I'll, just, I'll send the list in the other group as well. Just give me a yeah. Yeah, I've shared, the, reason, uh, the reason why was this thing is that I thought like within like this meeting or like the next meeting like uh, there was some like certain questions I re remembered like uh, somebody was uh, talking about this a while back. These are like not exactly these are problematic questions that the program director and asked that technically they're not supposed to ask, right? Like, uh, like uh, for example, it's something like you know any question regarding politics, 
yeah. or this thing that, you know tech, ideally in a situation the program director is not supposed to ask these kinds of questions the interviewer but like if you get asked you still need like a diplomatic like answer right so yeah. i thought we could like figure out a few of these questions and then like figure out a, a way to answer them that like you know still gives them a solid answer without like getting um, you know this thing we can probably keep this for next meeting we'll just keep like this as the general thing because there are quite a few like uh, uh like for example there there was something like if you get married and then uh, will you just like leave the residency program and like go back to your home country this is like a quite a more targeted more towards women right like again ideally the question should not be framed this way or like this should not be asked at all but like we still need to find like a good answer for it. Like yeah. even it's a legit question. Like you know, yesterday I think like uh, if somebody asked, like if I have a, uh, to ask a question, I feel if I have to ask them that you know, suppose in the case of emergency, a resident gets an emergency. So how will mm-hmm. you deal with that thing? Like it's a these questions are legit at the end of the day. Like ever, yeah. if, even if you get married during the residency, what would you do? Mm. I feel these are exactly. legit questions. Even they can ask us like what will our plan be in that case because they don't want to lose the resident. Right. Yeah, the thing is, uh, getting married during this thing, ideally, like they should, like in my, how I see it, they shouldn't ask because that's too personal a question. It's, you know, you shouldn't really be asking. But like, again, there was uh, somebody was telling, like they had an experience where like uh, generally, like a couple of women have had this this thing, okay, like, oh, if you get married and your husband calls you back to your home country, will you just leave the residency program and go? Like, that's not a good way to ask that question. And that's not generally a good question to ask, right? I'm just using this as one example. The other one was a very complicated one is, uh, have you gotten interviews from anywhere else? And if so, where? Like you technically, you're not supposed, they're not supposed to even ask you. Right? They can ask. So you need to, that's that. That's a tricky answer that you have to give that like doesn't like piss them off, but at the same time, like doesn't give away any information. So yeah. So we'll focus that on the next meeting. Today we have like three questions, right? We'll focus on this. Like we just have two questions. Like if you were first question yeah. is the superpower thing. The second question is if you have ever had a conflict, and the third question mm-hmm. we can take is so uh, I have the list uh, with the somebody just I just share in the group. Like, uh, what's your favorite? Uh, like yesterday we had the element of the nature. Like we had you know very good yeah. answer from that. If and ever- today there is like in the third question in the list it says what's your spirit animal? What's your favorite tree? Yeah, I, I'm looking at the same list which you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the which body self do you identify with? Hmm. Let's find a good, you know, let's find a good question. Like if you have, you can just write in the chat box, and we can take up that third question, so that we we can just talk about that because I think we have covered almost all the questions like U.S. healthcare system, home country, all those questions have been taken and we have discussed it many multiple times. So we can just take these behavioral questions more. Or if you today. had the power to go back in time, which part of the history would you like to go okay. back to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, oh, we'll take that question. The third one would be that. Yeah. So j- j- about superpower, if you're given a chance to have a superpower, what would that be? Anybody wants to answer? If you want to answer about this question, it's fine. Even no answer is going to be wrong, right? Uh, someone in chat has typed out an answer. Like it'd be good if they like you know said it over like uh, through voice chat, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it'll give them a chance to like speak it out. Have you ever been comfortable having handled it? So somebody just wrote, okay, uh, yeah, the X-ray vision. So I can just read that out. Thank you so much, Dr. Prabhin. Just give me a second. I'll read that out. So he gave a very good answer. The X-ray vision, this could assist in diagnosis and turn injuries or illnesses without the need for the invasive procedures, which could speed up the patient care and reduce the risk of complications. Yeah, that's a very good answer. Yeah. So we don't have to stick to medicine, right? No, if we no, no. have the power. No, you don't have to stick to yeah. that. So think, looking at the current scenario of the, you know, Israel-Palestine war and Ukraine and Russia. I, I won't go on that and do at all. I won't, to be very honest, I won't personally talk about Israel-Palestine. Okay. Yes. Oh. No, no, I, I would have gone like that. If, okay. I, if I had given the power, the United okay. Nations organization is the organization which can, you know, maintain peace. I think it's a good 
in general oh, US was there is some some kind of I'll mute them just give me a second okay. yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah so if i am given the power i will make the uno as the most strong organization in the uh, world so which can maintain peace and uh, can potentially avoid all this kind of war and damage to the humankind which currently we have like witnessed in last uh, this year and last couple of years as you know so i can indirectly say something that i i wish i can uh, have some superpower which and i can be the chief of you and or something <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. My my own like I really like your sentiment. I really like the kind of answer that you're going for here. The only <clears> thing <throat> I would say in those that nowadays you have to be extra careful about like mentioning certain specific things because for some reason everything is political these days. Even yeah. the UN, it's not a perfect organization. It has its biases which are well documented in this thing. And a someone who's more well read on the edu uh, on that. matter would not like you know they might not think like your answer is that good of an answer like making you and as like a like a sort of global like all reaching body or something like that right mm -hmm. um so i would like your answer the sentiment is good someone posted in the comments like you know like uh, i uh, i would remove uh, all the hatred from all people's heart you think that the, the, is listen on before you go further oh, like, see uh, listen one further sorry, go ahead. they are yeah, expecting sure. like we the most of the people who are like interview we like we we, we are not uh, expected to have all the knowledge of the world mm -hmm. we have more medical yeah. sciences so it's just mm -hmm. just they are asking our perspective how we think uh, it's it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that we have to be really well versed with those informations mm -hmm. like in deeply but as mm -hmm. a uno you but as uno signifies what what it signifies a neutral body in the world right let's mm -hmm. go with the um, normal anatomies instead of pathologies like what happens at the back door we don't we don't have to care for that what what it's supposed to do uh, you know what oh, is supposed to do Hindu, like, that, that was Dr. my concept into what dr om wants to say is He's correct. Like your sentiment is very good, but why to name UN? You just say I want to have a super power. If I ever get a chance to have a super power, I would want you know there should be uh, like everybody should be happy in the world and there should be no war. Like exactly. Yeah. Okay. Instead, mm -hmm. of, instead of using like a UN or something, it's good to have an opinion. Okay. 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 To, you know, we want to be apolitical over there. So let's not name an organization. Like that's a, just a suggestion. Otherwise, your sentiment and answer are very good. Like if you ask me this, I would say because you know there are these many billion people who have you, you know who don't get food to eat. If I ever get a superpower, I'll make sure that everybody gets food at least three times a day. That's it, and nobody wastes the food. That would be my superpower. I want to say. Let's not name an organization or something. Like be let's be apolitical. But yeah, your sentiment is very good and answer is good. All right. So yeah, let now I started. Let's carry on now, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So your answer is perfect. Without naming any organization, you could just say whatever you want to say. Yeah, Doctor Alisa, you want to say? Then we'll go to Doctor Kluut as well. Okay. Um, if I could have one superpower, then mm -hmm. I would have the power to heal. Uh, since working in a cancer hospital, I've seen so many patients with so much of suffering and death, and it affects not only the patient but their families as well so i would like to have the ability to provide immediate relief to the patient and good health a good answer dr alisa yeah dr kluud you want to say the your answer you can just say switch on your mic hello good morning everyone yeah. so i came up uh, so my answer was exactly same but it's quite a different but it was healing so if um, if i have to select a, any superpower i'll go for the healing because that is beneficial for all over the human kind it revolutionizes the patient care and it will significantly enhance the healthcare outcomes and also it has potential benefits in accelerating the recovery pain management relief and it will improve our chronic diseases and also it helps a lot in the you know enhanced food uh, wound uh, wound healing and uh, a lot of being like uh, sometimes we have just um, well being like mental well being it helps with it so healing is the most powerful 
and most beneficial superpower in my mind. And that's all. Thank you. That's a good answer. That's a very good answer. Anybody else wants to give the answer? Dr. Oum, do you want to give your answer? Uh, sure. Mine is like extremely goofy, but like no, that's it's fine. something I read, read it a while back. So if I had, if I could have any superpower, it would be the power to control probability in the world around me. So for example, like I am at, I'm at home and I have a closet. What are the chances that I open the door and there's like a million dollars like lying around? The chances are zero, right? Nope, it's hundred now. I change it to a hundred percent. So every time I open my closet, there's a million dollars. With that way, you can like control practically everything, right? What, what uh, like somebody's like extremely sick. What is the uh, what are the chances that they recover completely within the next like three days? Hundred percent. So that would be my superpower. Oh, perfect. Anybody? Anybody wants to talk about their superpower? Please go ahead. Yeah, I would like to add one. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. If I had a I had a superpower, I would use it for, um, I mean, inventing new drugs that can, I mean, in for any diseases that are difficult to treat, maybe in the future or the present. So there are many diseases that we, that are very difficult to heal, right? So I will use my superpower to uh, yeah, treat, invent the drugs and treat the diseases that are difficult. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah, anybody else wants to say their answer? Or we have one answer in the chat box by Dr. Prabhin that he has an X-ray vision. Anybody wants to comment on that? Like, if you want to say anything over that, X-ray vision, yeah. This is the, or anybody wants to give an answer, or we should check with the second question. You can you can come up with interesting answers, guys. We are sixty-eight people here. You can just turn on your mics and speak. Yeah, I have one answer. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Yeah, um, I think if I could have a superpower, uh, I would. Uh, like to have uh, tele teleportation. What, what's that? Tele. Uh, yeah, teleportation. Exactly. So exactly. you know, this. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't have to have spent so much money traveling, and like you know, the time gets wasted in traveling. So you know, if I want to have a vacation, I would just like think that I would want to go to so and such and such place, and then yeah, I would be there. Or if I'm homesick, I can go back and visit my parents. Like, don't have to wait. Okay. So, Dr. Dipti has another answer. Dr. Dipti, you want to tell your answer? Um, yeah. Um, I would uh, like to have uh, become a powerful sorcerer like Dr. Strange and uh, hopefully be part of his team in the future. That's about it. <laughs> Good answer, interesting answer. Anybody else wants to see give their answer? Yes. Hello. Dr. Madhya, yeah. Yes, I want to uh, like the superpower of reading other people's mind. So I can feel what they're thinking and how they're feeling. So I can use this as the in the work environment and with the patients. So I can understand their emotions and be empathetic with my colleagues and with the patients. That's a good point. And Vadia, and Vadia you can read the uh, mind of PDs. <laughs> <laughs> so either they like me for the match or not. Yeah. So yeah, you, you just want to have that superpower so you can uh, make that person comfortable in that uh, at that particular time. That's a good superpower, yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Kalu, do you want to tell something? You just raise your hands. No, I'm fine. I already told you guys. Can I say? Um, I'm at work, but I can just say it for uh, for like just yeah, a minute. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes. Um. Uh, you guys um doing a great job actually. I was not being a part of it, but I just had a time, so I just joined it right now. So the superpower I think uh, I want is uh, maybe 
maybe a tablet i should make or maybe a, a magic or um, maybe a, just a palm touch that i can heal the patient from inside or maybe just uh, give them a confidence to talk about it because uh, in our community we just scared of talking about our symptoms it, it was taken as a myth so maybe just or just a handshake will give oh. them the courage to talk about their uh, medical conditions that will help in them yeah as well thank you like he, a very good answer yeah anybody else wants to give the answer yeah hello everyone yeah so if i had this superpower um i would uh, like to teleport myself uh, that would increase my efficiency i can be on multiple floors all at the same time also that gives me more um time to do some more social work around the world I could teleport myself from one country to another, um, you know, to help the communities and uh, basically uh, what's going on and just give uh, support. Also, it would give me time to spend uh, time with the family all over the world. So all I have to do is just, you know, think about it and appear anywhere I want and um, do whatever I want. Oh, that's a good superpower. I hope you get that superpower someday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, Dr. Mohammed, you want to tell your superpower? You have written that in chat, but do you want to tell the superpower here? Yes. Hi, everyone. So, uh, I want to have the superpower of uh, long distance vision or a scanning ability to you know, to scan through the universe and see if we can find other forms of life. And yeah, that's uh, the superpower I wish. I, I if I could take, I would want to have. Okay. Oh, so yeah. Um, and, yeah and, yeah, go ahead, doctor. Yeah, go ahead, doctor. Rasha. It's, it's Rasha. My name is Rasha. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I, I know, like, uh, you discussed, we don't have to include, like, the war and those things, but I have war. I'm from Sudan. So if is it a good answer if I said if I have a super war, I will stop the war in my country and try to build my country. It's not, like, like something like Russian or things, oh, but in that, yeah. Dr. Vasha, I think that's an excellent answer to say. You can say it. The <laughs> only thing that I, I would say it exactly the way you said it. I, I would like the superpower to stop the war and to like help the people of my country. I think that yeah. is a good way to say it. Just, uh, I would just avoid like naming like any particular yeah, organization. Yeah. That is what I would do. Otherwise, yeah. like, I think your answer is like an excellent answer. Thank you. Yeah, because I have like currently my people suffering from war. So it's, if I have super war, like of course I will stop the war and we will we will build our country again, or I build my country again. So yeah. Yeah, that's a perfect answer. Like yeah, without mentioning Russia or any other country, just we need to be diplomatic in this answer. But the answer is good. Like you want to stop the war in your country. That's a very good answer. Yeah. So anybody else, Doctor Anna, you even have typed your super power. Can you go go ahead with your super power? Do you want to tell it here? Tell it here. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Um, I had the superpower, as I, I uh, mentioned. Uh, the main thing is to spread the health, as I, uh, uh, as I believe that every human being, uh, deserve to be healthy. Okay. And to be uh, when we are health, we are healthy. We are in a good mood. We will. Uh, we will do everything for the future. Okay. That's what I want to say. Okay. That's a good answer again. Can I say something? Go ahead, Dr. R. Yes. Uh, if I would choose uh, the power of healing touch, because as a medical professional, I'm, I'm, I think we, are, we all are dedicated to relieving pain and sufferings and having the ability to heal with a simple touch would allow me to make an immediate and profound impact on the lives of my patients. And it not only would enable me to treat physical aspect of patient illness, but also add to their emotional and psychological needs. That's a good answer. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else wants to give the answer? Like we just spend another five minutes, like by 2 uh, 9.35, we shift to the next second question so that we can cover the at least three to four questions in a meeting. Anybody wants to answer? Yeah, yeah sure. I... Okay, so if I had a superpower, I would remove uh, the hatred from all people's hearts because I think hatred is the, the main evil that... Uh, so I think hatred 
is a source of evil that's going on in this world. So if I could remove that, then we would not see any evil and less people will suffer. Yeah, very good answer. Anybody else? I want to add. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Bina. Um, uh, if I have a superpower, superpower so um, uh, I have the ability to read the mind of the people, like if they can afford the expense of their treatment, if they can, uh, I will let them. And if they can't, I will treat them freely. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. So Dr. Mohammed. Can I? Yeah, go ahead, please. Anybody if you want to answer this question? Yeah. Ahead. Um, if yeah. I would like to have a superpower, I want to, to increase the health literacy uh, okay. because I believe that uh, by empowering the individuals uh, to better understand and manage their health, uh, it's better that uh, they have the uh, control over themselves. And I would like to uh, increase the health literacy. Okay. Can I? Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Mukherjee. Yeah, so... Uh, if I can have any superpower in the world, I think I choose tele telepathy because uh, I can control some people's minds. I can make them complain to more, uh, like complain to taking my advice, uh, like uh, more ready to uh, readily agreeable to uh, treatment options that I think are best for them, or monitor them. Like yeah, basically that. I think I do, I don't think much more about it, but I think I choose telepathy. That's a good answer. Yeah. Okay, I wish everybody gets the superpower, whatever they want. You have good ideas. Yeah. So anybody else, Dr. Prabhim, you want to say there your answer here? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, Dr. Reen, just go ahead with the answer. Or doc, anybody else wants to answer this question? Like what superpower if you want to have, if, if somebody asked you during the interview, like what superpower you want to have, then we'll shift to the next question, which is like, if you ever had a conflict with your colleague, how you handled that? What was that conflict and how you handled that? Yeah, Dr. Mohammed uh, Birer, can you, you do, want to just tell about your superpower here? Yeah, sure. Uh, I just had like two, two super power, two, okay. two super power that I want to attain. Uh, the one is to achieve universal health coverage. So I think okay. that's something that's very challenging. If I could do that, I, I might be able to make the healthcare affordable and accessible to everybody around the world. The second oh. one, I want to recognize people with mental health problems because I know people especially male they they don't they don't complain so we don't know uh, uh, who's having the health problem issue and there is a higher risk of uh, suicidal attempts so if I could recognize those people I might be able to afford help okay. perfect answer so you just need to be a little bit more loud I don't know if it's a problem with my network only I think it's from my side I'm not sure why yeah, you just need to be like you can use a mic or you can just speak more loudly. That might just help you. Otherwise, your answer is very good. Yeah, but I I couldn't hear your answer, complete answer. But yeah, I just came to know from the comments. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, maybe it's a problem with my device. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe, maybe I like try to check in again on so that you don't you know uh, mess that. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Like we still have one minute left. Anybody else wants to tell the superpower? Then we'll shift to the next second question. I think we can move to the next question. Oh. Can, I, can I say my answer? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Martin. Dr. Marlin. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I think if I had this one superpower, I would um uh, I would like use my eyes to scan through patients' bodies for uh, the exact site of pathology and how how it's um, how it's happened. And I know we have different types of radiographic, uh, I mean, uh, X-rays and uh, radiology modalities now. But uh, I know I think it's more uh, more uh, time and money uh, saving to just you know 
uh, spot diagnose the, uh, the patients and sometimes it's easier, uh, especially when the health care cost is really high. So um, that's that's a superpower um, I, I, I would like to have. So Ayushman, in this question, like everybody's answering about something which can be useful, uh, uh, you know, so is is that the motto of this question? This is what PDs expect or they expect anything, anything we can like somebody can say, I am, I want to be immortal, invincible, not to die or something, or, or we have to really put something useful things. So in the, like see that's my again first experience and I don't I, I don't I don't have an no, I'm not saying this. to you actually by say addressing you I mean all all yeah. all of but us it's somebody, a teamwork. Oh, yeah. In my view, at least, like, I think what they're trying to, like, get is, like, I think they want to know what problem do you think is, like, you know, the biggest problem in the world right now. So, therefore, like, what superpower? Or, like, what is the, like, I think, like, it's more just, like, kind of, like, what you prioritize. So, I think it's just, like, something interesting about you. I don't think there's anything, like, super specific. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, like, peace, like, health, like, mm -hmm. that just shows, like, you know, the, the people who said they want x-ray vision or the ability to, you know, uh yeah. diagnose yeah. somebody by just touching or like healing them that shows like you know that like kind of dedication to healthcare something like that it's more to show kind of that i don't think there's any right or wrong answer here like you can show whatever even the person like yeah, you know can... that, that they mm -hmm. wanted to scan the universe for other life forms i think that's a very interesting answer he really wants mm -hmm. to know whether aliens exist or not and he wants the yeah. ability to figure that out so i think that's a really cool mm -hmm. answer yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that that answer could be uh, related to any normal life events even it's not only related to healthcare but eventually they want to know your uh, feelings like you know you don't need to be selfish or something you have a chance to explore show yourself like uh, deeper thoughts yeah i think they want to know more about you what your mind thinks mm. uh, yeah 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 nice okay yeah like uh, if you you ask me i'm so sorry if i was rude I'm sorry for that. I actually meant to say, say if I was a program director at that time, or if I was somebody, like if I was interviewing you, I would just want to know your personality from your answer. No answer is wrong or right, but I just want to, I would like to judge your personality from that particular answer, right? Like I, I would personally not like if somebody gives the typical healthcare answers, like doctor, somebody mentioned about X-ray vision. Like they want to have that X-ray vision or something. Like I won't personally like that answer. But yeah, for me, I would just judge your personality from that answer. Like that, that what Doctor Ohm said. But yeah, like somebody, uh, like everybody gave a lot of interesting answers. So yeah, that's what I I, I would just uh, ju try to learn about your personality from that answer. Like I won't be looking for a very particular answer. Uh, but yeah, I would just judge your personality from that answer. That's what I think. I that I don't think we should force a healthcare oriented answer because if we are faking it, they're going to figure it out. They just want to know who we are and we should just give them any interesting answer that we can. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was uh, I was uh, trying to say. So we should be comfortable and whatever we think, say it like deeply, whatever our thoughts are. Yeah, absolutely. Like you told, yeah, you told mention about your. I just can you know relate your sentiment, and that that means like that's why I can judge your personality from that answer. So that's gives me an idea about your personality. So yeah, so like every answer is right. Every answer is right actually. So yeah, so can you shift to the second question? Like if you ever had a conflict with your colleague and how you dealt with that? Yeah, anybody wants to answer that question? Doctor, this is the conflict with colleague one, right? Sorry? Uh, the, sorry, the question was conflict with the yeah, colleague and how did we... Uh, how you manage that? How you handle it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I need a couple of minutes. I'll, I'll see. Okay. Anybody has a, like any interesting incident to tell or they want to answer this question? Yeah. Thank you, Indu, for writing. Yeah. Hindu, you want to answer this question? I'm really trying to recall the conflict. Okay, take your time. It's not an easy question. Yeah. Okay. Um, just... do, do you have an answer, Ayman Karis? Like, 
I have an answer. I have an incident okay. with my colleague. Like yeah. when I had a conflict, I just have to frame it in right. I just take one minute. So for yeah, that, till that, anybody wants to answer can go ahead. Can I try? Go ahead, please. Yeah. Um. Yes, I remember during my my surgery rotation. So. It was post-operative. My senior asked me to give a patient um, a heparin injection. So I have drew my senior attention that the patient has chronic renal failure. So we can't give him heparin or we either have to readjust the dose. She asked me to do what she said. She asked me, I have to just follow her orders. So um, yes, I told her that I want to speak to her in private. We went and I told her that uh, we're trying to give the best for the patient. And I showed her literature supporting my my point of view that we can give patients with chronic renal failure, heparin, or we need to adjust the dose. So um, I managed to convince her that we either need to readjust our dose or change the medication or even reach to uh, uh, consult a nephrologist. And yes, so I was able to communicate how my answer and we solved the complex. Yeah, yeah it's nice thinking. <laughs> yeah, so Dr. Siddharth is asking, it has to be case related only or can be in a general, can be any other conflict. I think it can be like, you, you can just tell like, I don't have, I didn't have ever a conflict with some, with my colleague, but yeah, I had once a conflict. You can then talk about general conflict as well. It's not necessary to have a conflict with a colleague always. Okay, can we make it up? Like, you don't have to tell it in you just have to give your answer. Okay. You Sorry, you make it as long as you can sell it, right? Like if you can talk about uh, it properly, then absolutely you can make it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to tell the people that you're going to make it up. That's an art, right? You don't have to tell the scheme to everyone. Yeah, no, we're we're a, we're an ethical like uh, you know interview preparation group here. No faking, nothing, nothing of that sort going on. Yeah, absolutely, and we are being recorded, and we, this will be posted on the YouTube. So we have to be very cautious about our words. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so okay, should I go with my answer? Like I had uh, framed my conflict in a proper way. Like I had this incident. So yeah, I just go, be, uh, should I go with my answer? Anybody else wants to talk about it? Yes, please. Why don't you start? Yeah, please. You can start. You can start. Okay, I'll just go. So it, I was working in a private hospital after my graduation. So I was on a morning, I was on a morning shift and, uh, so, and a consultant, a neurologist ordered a CT head for the patient. So it was, uh, so my shift was going to end. And what we used to do was to have, we used to maintain a register where we used to write the patient. And uh, on side of that, we used to be writing the, these, all the orders for the patient for the next shift. So this consultant told me, uh, my shift was about to end and the consultant told me to order, order the CT head without the contrast. And the, you know, I, I just wrote that and uh, I just gave up my, gave my, uh, gave out my sign out notes to my next to to the next doctor in the next shift and next day when I come back the consultant was furious at me that the CT head wasn't done the previous day so I just uh, in my mind I had uh, a thought I, I was thinking that I had given the notes and I've mentioned it to the uh, my next doctor as well so I went to that doctor, I waited for my shift to end and waited for the other doctor. And I gave, I asked, I confronted, I confronted him and asked that why wasn't the CT head done when I just mentioned that that doctor specifically, then, you know, I was like, kind of, I was like furious at her, but then she told me that you haven't mentioned that on your notes, on the register, like where you on the register you haven't mentioned that and uh, I was like no I have mentioned it and this and that but I, and I remembered that I have given a verbal order to her but when then uh, when I checked the register I haven't written that order so after that I definitely first acknowledged that it was my fault and then I, I apologized to my colleague 
and I and I made sure that next time whatever other specific orders, we'll just write it uh, separately as well, so that all orders are um, all orders for the day are done. So yeah, that was my I had a conflict with my colleague, and that's how I handled it. Anybody else? It's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we are also pondering over it. Yeah, I just have to frame it in a better way and have to practice it. I know I didn't speak it well, but yeah, I will just prepare that. And then I again had a scenario with my colleague, and then I stopped stopped talking to her. But I don't want to talk about that during my interview. Yeah, yeah, that is not the part of resolve, right? Yeah. So anybody else wants to just share their scenarios? I can go. I'm not prepared, oh, but I have to go ahead. Go ahead. So yeah, a conflict can happen in any place. I remember one time when I was working as a, a clinical research associate at University of Iowa. We work in three shifts. So morning shift, evening shift, and night shift. And I used to, like one uh, time I assigned, they assigned me for the night shift and my colleague working in the evening shift. So I noticed for several times she left her job, part of her job, like we have some uh, uh, like a task we have to do. And she left one of the tasks all the time for me. And then first time I said, okay, maybe she forgot next time. And then by the third or fourth time, I just talked to her and I asked her, like, I noticed that you leave this task for me and actually give me like extra like load and uh, will make me behind. So why you are leaving this? Do you need any help or do you have anything? And she told me because I have a problem. I don't know how to do this task. And then I said, okay, yeah, this is not a solution to leave it for me, but let's try to figure out to, I will teach you how to do it. So I decided to come half an hour earlier and she, she can stay half an hour late. So we can spend one hour every day for like almost three or four shifts. And then she get it and Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think I mute myself. I don't know how come. So I said, yeah. So we decide, like I decide to come early, have an hour early before my shift. And she agreed to stay half an hour late. So we have one hour together every like shift. And then uh, we are, I am able to explain to her how she can do this task. And then she are able to do her task. And this way we are able to fix the conflict. Uh, and uh, yeah. I'm happy with the result. So anybody else wants to answer? Like, yeah, you can just mention a conflict with the resident and attending as well. Dr. Salam, you want to go with your answer? I have a question. So, like, you know, conflict with resident. I mean, colleague could be, it's a teamwork, doctors, nurses, and others. So it could be with the nurse also conflict. Of course, yeah, hundred was. Oh, everybody is your colleague. Like there was another question. Like if you had ever had a conflict with the, uh, your nurse as well, that that everybody is your colleague. Yeah, you can even talk about that. Yeah, any Isn't professional it? in the healthcare system can be a colleague. Yeah, even yeah. if you want to talk about the real life, like apart from medical profession, you can even talk about that as well. Like you can just say, I don't have a particular conflict in the medical profession, but outside the hospital, I had a conflict with this person. That's how you handle it. Yeah, Dr. Anshubi, go ahead with the answer. Thank you, Aishma. Um, um, like in clinical settings, we always have the second opinion and uh, kind of always have a second thought about uh, any kind of management or any kind of investigation. And um, one of the conflict I would like to discuss over here is uh, I was uh, rotating in pediatric department along with my colleague and it was during my internship days. And uh, our resident gave us an order that you need to finish up uh, this this uh, investigation for this patient. And patient was critically ill at that time. And uh, so I and my colleague divided the investigations and uh, uh, all the blood reports will be done by her and the rest of the things I uh, agreed upon taking the things. And I finished up my everything, but uh, 
she yeah, that's again a good answer yeah anybody else wants to share their their with the anybody and how do you dealt with that in, in the, I, yeah go ahead go ahead i have um, i have answered like uh, uh, i had a conflict uh, during my school time in medical school that uh, where we were planning for indoor sports and uh, two member of our sports club uh, did not show up at a certain point uh, so i reach out to them separately to understand their perspectives and then i arranged a meeting for three of us to sort out the things uh, what i understand was that it was just a symbol, uh, it was just a miscommunication and we were able to resolve it and uh, then proceed with the with planning the sports team that's that's my answer oh that, that, no answer is uh, wrong and so that's your experience that's a good experience like you mentioned something apart from medical profession that's again a like the a good answer yeah anybody else wants to just share the yeah i think i can or... uh, um, i have a short answer Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. So uh, I recall a short incident like when I was working at New uh, in my home country, New Delhi, and I was a non acad JR in the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, one of the renowned uh, Apex Institute in India. So I was in emergency department night duty, and there were there was a case of motor vehicle accident, and uh, the patient was in pain, and and his uh, Blood pressure was uh, quite high, and uh, in the meantime, I was also attending a, a like it was a major MBA. So two to three patients were like together in on the one side. So I told my nurse, "So please quickly give the patient morphine and anti-hypertensive medications." But after half an hour, I was called by my supervisor, "Hey, doctor, Indu, why didn't you do this?" I said, "What?" Like, why didn't you give the required medication to the, that patient? Uh, I don't remember the name. Then then I asked my nurse, did you do that? She said, oh, she like she got busy in something or by chance she forgot. Like, it usually doesn't happen. From that incident, I realized I documentation is a very important aspect of medical sciences. So we should always document so that the next person who looks at the documents of the patient immediately remembers what next to do verbal verbal instructions may not be you know sometimes can be missed so that was my learning from that and i'm thank and after that i i realized the importance of documentation that's all that's good incident. yeah dr om you want to talk about your incident okay um let me think yeah, so this was something, the thing is, I don't know how much, like, how I can, like, if I should bring this up or not, but, like, okay, I'll just say it. Okay. Um, so my example was uh, during my internship year in my OBGYN posting, I, uh, first of all, I never really had many conflicts with my uh, uh, colleagues. Like, it, like most of my postings, like, most of my work has always been, like, very uh, relaxed and understanding. But this one incident, what happened was... Um, it was uh, our units, uh, our team's day to perform surgeries in the operation theater. And usually uh, on those days, two uh, of the uh, interns posted, uh, you know, assigned to that team would have to, uh, in addition to their uh, daily duties, would have to take over um, post-op duties, post-operation, like uh, management and like observation uh, and 12 hour shifts. So one person during the day and one person during the night. Um, and, uh, technically a third person, uh, should be, uh, assigned to the ICU in case like there's a patient who's uh, supposed to, uh, you know, who, uh, who had like a severe, um, who had a severe complication during the surgery, uh, there would have to be a third uh, intern who's assigned to the ICU, but though, uh, because it rarely happens, uh, nobody's actually like really assigned. It's just a, one of the other interns are supposed to cover you know, uh, are supposed to come over and uh, take over that role when necessary. And it's decided by the interns themselves, like amongst the interns, 
we have to figure it out uh, figure it out like who does it on that day so uh, one of those days we had a patient who was admitted to the icu and um, me and my friend uh, me and my fr- uh, another colleague of mine we were already posted to the uh, day shift and night shift of the normal like post op observation so we couldn't go so i had to sit and um, mediate this entire like argument amongst the, all of the other interns because nobody else wanted to everybody else had gone home and nobody wanted to come back to sit in the icu and observe this patient oh, probably i would like you know skip that line there was this, this thing as like you know whose responsibility it was so after like and then uh, there was also a discussion that like uh, you know i could pretend to cover for them uh, just just until like you know the supervisors like the attending physician sees it um so i actually did debate like uh, doing that but then uh, my uh, resident at that time she instructed me that like this is not your problem you have been assigned a duty you cannot step away from that duty it is up to them to figure out who it is and eventually um, when the attending uh, physician came they didn't find a- anyone uh, there they found one of the residents themselves like covering and so like the all the other like uh, uh, what do you call them all the other interns like they uh, were like reprimanded because uh, they were told to like you know take their like uh, job more seriously and to like cover and to communicate better and understand and like the thing uh, i when i reflected on this and i learned what i learned from this is that a lot of the times i don't have conflicts with my like colleagues is because some uh, almost always i like take it on myself to do the extra work to cover for any other like you know any of the the uh, sh- uh, shortcomings or like any of the uh, potential issues and the second thing i learned is that sometimes you just can't cover it all at which point you can just like do the maximum you can and then uh, you know confide in like a higher authority like someone who works above you maybe a resident or the attending physician explain to them the situation and ask them to like help you resolve this issue because at the end of the day like i think that's the thing that i learned from it is that sometimes you just can't do it all that would be my example i'd probably like rephrase it a little bit better to sound like a little less blamey but yeah this would be my example me, yeah, it's fine you're not blamey it's a good example yeah you just need to shorten it so that you don't mm-hmm. take much of the time otherwise it's a good example yeah. yeah just it's it's very good but just need to re- rephrase a bit and shorten a mm-hmm. bit so that it's better yeah yeah uh, as i was saying it i realized like some things are like problematic i'll definitely like go on that thank you so much anyone else has any other thoughts uh, yeah uh, i'll go with one answer so okay go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so this incident happened when i was doing my house job uh, like uh, in the internal medicine department so what happened was uh, it was a night shift and uh, we had a huge patient volume load that day i don't know what happened but i don't remember the particular day but it was a huge patient load and so many things were happening and uh, like uh, other uh, so there was this uh, we are some there are some team members and uh, the residents they gave us uh, a task to write case sheets so what happened was in a hurry i did mess up i wrote a wrong diagnosis on the, the case sheet so i didn't think uh, like uh, I, i didn't know that uh, i made a mistake in the time and what happened was the next day and he saw it and uh, he recognized the mistake and he scolded the resident uh, he didn't scold me because uh, he, he thought that he thought that the resident writes the case sheets and it has nothing to do with interns so he did scold us but the resident was very angry with me because of that uh, because uh, this uh, this thing is something that directly affects the patient care so yeah that was a uh, like i do i do realize that that was a very grave mistake and uh, what i did was i did apologize to him and even the attending that i went to the attending and i told that it was my mistake i did the mistake i wrote the wrong so yeah and then uh, i i sat with the resident who was calling and i did apologize to him and uh, like uh, uh yeah it was it went great i think later he did become one of my friends the resident and we were still in connect, uh, still connected yeah so yeah i feel that a simple sorry can take you to places that 
I think yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's a good answer. Yeah, you just need to work more, practice it more, so yeah. that you're fluent. Otherwise, it's a good answer. Even I need to practice my answer. It's an impromptu, very good answer. Like definitely, and the message you have that just by uh, saying a sorry, you can just you know uh, patch up again. So that's mm -hmm. a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, and I do feel like this this mistake like uh, made me think twice or uh, like check twice before writing another case sheet. Like yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So anybody else, uh, Dr. Alisa, yeah, so, uh, you and then we'll go to Dr. Madhya. Yeah, Dr. Alisa, go ahead. Okay, I remember this incident uh, when I was uh, working as a medical officer, and uh, there used to be, I mean, uh, we used to be we used to be posted in different wards and there used to be two medical officers so uh, one day when I was working in the emergency ward I got a call from the ward that I was not assigned to and one of my friend was assigned to that ward and uh, when I went up there I found what patient, one patient was seizing and then I gave the patient the medication and when I talked to the nurse he told me that they had called the doctor who was posted on that ward but he couldn't uh, be contacted that's why they called me the patient party was really angry so i counseled the patient and uh, then i went to talk to my friend who was actually posted in that ward and he told me that as there was a huge load on opd that day so the doctor had uh, called him to the opd so he had gone to opd um, but that actually compromised the patient care since that patient was seizing for a long time and the relatives were also very angry so we all medical officers uh, uh, we conducted a meeting and then we decided that if uh, things like this happen next time, if we are asked to go to another ward we are, in which we are not supposed to go to, then we will uh, talk to our friend and inform them, that, inform them that we are going to this ward and we'll attend our calls. But if in case there is an emergency, then be ready that something might come up. So we'll have to be attend. We'll have to be go. We'll have to be going to that ward. And we also used to have. Uh, actually, we used to have one duty phone in which we used to get call if uh, something like that happens. Since um, that day, we even talked to the consultant regarding since there are two medical officers now, so we would need two phones. In that case, if one phone is not answered, then we can contact to the other person. So we also got two phones and that also helped us in the long run. So the, uh, before moving to uh, Dr. Madiha, like I just want to say the third question is, if you go back in time, whatever you want to change in your life, so that will be the third question. And we'll take this question till 10, 10, so that we can shift to the third question, try to cover as many questions as possible. Yeah, so Dr. Madiha, go ahead with your answer. So actually, I want to discuss the one uh, incident when I was working as a medical intern in my doing my house job, uh, we were uh, like um, allotted to the duty of med uh, medical emergency where we worked as a team. Uh, we have to manage the 10 to 12 beds daily. So there were one of my colleagues uh, were always late and because of that, the workload on us were increased because we have to manage her bed as well. So I decided to talk to her first uh, why she was always late and uh, just to get to know that if she has any personal issues going on in her life. So, but uh, she mentioned that she couldn't sleep at night and that's why she couldn't show up. But uh, uh, I offered her um, some help if she need, but they were, uh, she was always late. So I decided to uh, report to the senior resident about her daily issue. So, that's way she corrected her behavior. So you confronted mm -hmm. her first? Yes. Yes, I, I, I talked to her first if she need any help. Is that she has any issues with her convenience issue or any, uh, like she need any help. But oh. she wasn't like correcting her behavior. Okay. So but that's why we like then you mentioned to the senior behavior. resident. Okay. That's a good answer. Yeah. No, please. Okay. please. Ed, like what did you learn out of this situation and experience because that was for her and what was your experience in the end you can add that thank you yeah yeah you can just frame like you can just when you frame your answer you can just add what you learned from that otherwise the example is very good yeah 
So, uh, Dr. Deepti, I'll go ahead with your answer. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, many times conflict and criticism can be constructive. Uh, I recall an incident during my third year rotation when I was working in a busy clinic. Um, as part of my role, I was taking dictation from the attending for follow-up orders. I was instructed to write the, uh, the need to get a urinalysis and a urodynamic study for the next appointment, and uh, the patient was instructed as well. However, uh, due to some miscommunication, this was not conveyed to the checkout nurse, and um, she checked out the patient. Um, she went uh, instead went ahead in uh, following the protocols as is and was not aware that the new orders were directly from the physician because it was quite a busy day. Um, the attending then reached out to me regarding this, thinking that I may, I may have missed out on documenting it. And I showed the documenting orders to the physician and the nurse um, and then uh, conveyed to the nurse that the orders were from the attending himself. Um, so uh, taking this in mind, I took the time to reflect and learn that uh, the I took the time to learn and reflect the importance of proper documentation and maintaining the chain of order and uh, overcoming potential mistakes uh, due to miscommunication within the team. That's it. Yeah, that's a good answer. Anybody else? So we have three minutes uh, to go for this third question. Anybody else wants to give their example? I want to answer. This. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Nisha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember one uh, incident um, where we had to present the case to our attendings by giving the provisional diagnosis and the differential diagnosis. So every time when I present a case, uh, I had one of my co uh, colleague who always used to conflict my question, my diagnosis. And um, it was in a so rude way, actually. So one day I took time and talked to him and I, by asking the reason him, he said that he was very upset with him because of the special attention I used to get from the attendings because of my scores. <clears throat> um, and then I, later I uh, thanked him because of his question and conflicts. I always used to be so attentive and uh, I used to cross check my diagnosis every time because I don't want to give him any chance to conflict my answer. In that way, I thanked him, but later I explained him that scores are nothing uh, to take uh, to consider. The most important thing is the clinical knowledge we attain. So by he being the being root makes the I mean, it disturbs the harmony and environment. So I asked him not to do that. And later he understood and apologized. But later, every time we had this presentation thing, we used to have a healthy debate. I mean, yeah, he used to give his opinions and we used to discuss about among the different. Yeah, that was my experience. That's a good answer. Yeah. Anybody else? Response to the third question. Harshita, you want to answer something or anybody else? Um, I want to say, um, Go ahead, Dr. Sabine. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, so yeah, I want to work. So yeah, I just, I just wanted to add, I had two things in my mind, but I can talk about one. So, uh, first thing is during my medical school, um, we had a group of like five uh, students and then we discuss uh, certain topics, like especially for physio uh, physiology. Um, during these sessions, um, I was very determined, like, okay, I'm doing the good I, uh, that I can do. But uh, I, I feel like my study schedule was very uh, like a flexible one. I don't make it like uh, before, like a very structured one. But one of the uh, member, uh, one of my friends, she had like very structured, organized schedule. So during the discussions, it, it was apparent that uh, she wasn't, uh, very um, active or maybe she wasn't uh, very fulfilling uh, with the with my um, study style so she, uh, she so we organized a con like a group meeting and then we discuss about it e eventually coming up to the discussion that um, certain like with when we whenever we study we have like an hour where we go with the like, organized and the structured part like what topics we have to discuss and then we go like for another hour we will discuss in in this, the way i like it like in a more flexible just uh, um, just uh, any uh, random topic and we discuss about it and then we uh, do the same thing in the future as well so this is how we communicate and um, we resolve the conflict 
I know it's not a, in a para, uh, in a good paraphrasing way, but it's, it is one of the things that I was thinking I should. Yes, I no, it's wrong. Yeah, you could just frame it in a better way, of course, but that nothing is wrong. That you can mention about mm -hmm. the how you, you know, overcame that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Anjali, yeah, you can just quickly go with your example, then we can just shift to the next third question. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so it's not kind of an example. Um, I'm trying to answer it uh, maybe in a different way. Um, so when I initially just entered into my pediatric residency, uh, I really don't know anyone. So uh, I used to have a lot of conflicts with everyone because I was adjusting with the things. And uh, whenever uh, someone not finish up their task or not do it properly, I used to feel angry and sad that why someone is not doing this properly or that properly but gradually when you cope up with your colleagues when you start knowing them when you make friends and when you start adapting to their nature and everything when you come to know about their uh, different aspect of their life you start leaving those conflicts behind and uh, you start uh, giving up uh, some things and try to help or come up with a better idea and help even them during their problems. And uh, you uh, start living up that conflict. conflict, And uh, you start making friends and start adapting to them. So that's uh, what I had in uh, lesson that uh, initially when you don't know someone, you have some kind of conflicts. Everyone has. But when you start adapting to their nature and when you start uh, um, knowing them, you improve on that aspect yeah thank you yeah that's nice i think uh, now we are looking for the next question yeah that's the third question can you discuss what conflict with the head of department will it impact negatively And then you can just talk about that example and everybody can hear and give an opinion. Doctor, I don't know the name with the iPhone. This, you can just talk about that if you want to, like then we'll shift to the third question. Or. Uh, iPhone, uh, please answer your, your well, name is iPhone. Yeah, you, yeah, just yeah. Go, you just talk because... about your conflict and we, we can just, everybody can give their opinion. Yeah, because we don't know if it's negative or positive until yeah. we hear it. Sorry, so I can't. Right. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's yeah. absolutely fine. So we can just shift to the third uh, question. Like, if you if you ever get a chance to go back in time and change something, anybody wants to answer that question? Doctor Om or Indu, do you have anything you have thought about it? Sorry, what was the question again? If you, oh. ever, if you ever get a chance to go back and change something in your life, what would that be? It's a very interesting question. If I if I can go back in time, I, I will never do medicine. I'll do engineering. <laughs> okay, that was a joke. Oh, Let's think. Yeah. You don't want to tell the program director, right? No. <laughs> okay. I'm really honest. <laughs> it came from the heart, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, just go ahead with the answers, or uh, should I? I have an answer. Should I go ahead with my answer then? Yeah, or, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can go. Yeah, please be the pioneer so that others can then follow okay, you. Okay. So I have something to ask. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Sylvia. So uh, it should be something I need to change about my past because I, for myself, I think I'm. Um, I don't have anything I won't change about my life. I'm I'm blessed with my life, and that's, I don't see anything I would like to change. So regarding my career and regarding my family, so I I, I don't think there's something I would like to change. Okay, it, it should that, be that that would be a perfect answer. You can say that I am grateful for whatever I have, and I cannot recall something I want to change ever in my life. Because yes, I did have my high points and low points in life, but yeah, they, they helped me to learn something. So I don't want to change them in the past. That would be a fine answer. There's no right or wrong answer. Like, yeah. So that would be a good answer, Dr. Salu. You don't need to have I had the same. Sorry. 
I had the same answer as well. Um, I wouldn't want to change anything. Uh, everything that has happened has happened for the reason and for better. And I'm grateful for everything. Thank yes, you. this is what is this is what I was thinking about. I'm yeah. I'm so thankful and grateful about everything in my life. And I think everything happened in my life for a reason. And I already learned a lot from lessons in my life. So I I will not regret anything right now, and and just be grateful and thankful for what happened and what's gonna happen to. Oh, okay. I feel you. Perfect answer. Yeah. So I'll go with my what if I get ever get a chance to see. So that's a very good question to think about that important person in my life, even more than my mother, because of the love she has given me throughout her uh, throughout my life. So currently she's in a vegetative state. She's completely bedridden, and we feed her with uh, uh, with the help of wild stew, and she has a urinary catheter. So. Uh, and she has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease as well. So something, if I ever get a chance to change something in my life is maybe going four to five years back uh, in time and just to make sure that I do everything just to reduce, uh, just to slow down the progression of her disease and I could ever, uh, I could get chance to spend more time with my grandmother. So yeah, that's something I would like to change in my life. Anybody else wants to answer something? Yes, I would like to try. Go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, first of all, I believe that we do make mistakes and we regret and then we learn. I, I believe that this is the process of learning. You learn from your mistakes and the feeling of, of regretting something, this is how you, you avoid doing the same mistake again. If I want to change something, I would, uh, I would, I would want to change the the time I needed to overcome or to learn from a, a mistake, like in the state of taking five days or commit the same mistake, uh, uh, the least time, I would just want to take the least time to learn from my mistakes. Oh, perfect, perfect, yeah. Dr. Indu or Dr. O, you want to have your, you want to tell your answer? Or anybody else? We still have 12 minutes for a meeting to end. Um, I mean, if I could go back in time and change one thing, I think I would like go back all the way to like my childhood. And I think um, I would definitely take like, you know, uh, take uh, better care of myself and like uh, 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 give more importance to my health. Because I think a lot of my life has been complicated by my health issues. And um, so, yeah, I think that's that uh, if there's something that I could change, that's what it would be. Uh, because other than that, every even the negative experiences I've had in my life have shaped me and made me who I am today. So I don't think I would change any of those. Can't have like a we can't have like a perfect life as well. Right. Like. Uh, well, what is that saying? Uh, smooth uh, seas don't uh, don't make good sailors or something like that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, in general, yeah. If if I had to change one thing, I would like uh, give more importance and like take uh, take much better care of my health. Yeah. So that would be my answer. Perfect. Yeah, nice one. So um, I I I also have something to say. Go ahead. Go this ahead. question is really uh, it it comes from the heart. This question is something which we really uh, we can't make it up. So uh, when I was thinking about me, uh. As we all know, you know, some some kind of the, with, uh, with age, wisdom comes, right? Some of the things which comes with age, which we, we can't think of uh, when we were in our 20s or, you know, early this thing, 30s. Uh, something comes with time. So now when I look back, I think I could have spent more time with my parents. Like my mom has Chagrin syndrome, but everyone knows what is that, right? Keratoconjunctivitis, and it comes with all other uh, uh, like rheumatoid arthritis, a lot of pain things. So my mom like has been 
uh, like in the uh, painful conditions last 20 years. And I, I thought, wish I could go back and make uh, and had made better decisions, which could have saved time. And this USMLE step, USMLE journey has also taken a lot of time studying and other things. So yeah, I could have made better decisions if I if I had the current wisdom. That's all. I'm so sorry you to tell about your mom's condition, but yeah, that's a very good answer. Yeah. So the iPhone, uh, so doctor is asking in the chat box due to misdiagnosis as well as to the emergency surgery, which was very traumatic. Of course, you can discuss. That's a very important aspect of your life. If you want to change that, of course, you can discuss about that. Yeah. Anybody else wants to give the answer? So if we want to answer this, um, if I say that I want to go back to my childhood, uh, should I say that I want the mindset of a child or can I say that if I still have the mindset which I have right now and can go to the past, how should I answer this? Can I do that? Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, for the me. question itself implies that like you're going back in time knowing what you know now, like in your current mental okay. state. Okay, okay. Okay, so then I'd like to... Okay, um, actually, my brother has ADHD. And if I could go back in time, then I would go back to the state when my brother was diagnosed with ADHD. At the time, I didn't have much knowledge about it. And we couldn't do... Um, I mean, we couldn't do great things for him that I would be able to do. I would be able to counsel my mother and my family much... Uh, better now and then I could uh, get him more treatments options uh, so that his disease wouldn't have progressed as much as it has been progressed now so that is one thing I would do if I have this knowledge and can go, and can go back in time okay, perfect. Okay, Dr. Anjali go ahead with your answer thank you Aishma yeah, um, my life has always been grateful to me and everything what I have come across have always taught me a lesson and framed me in a beautiful person. But uh, uh, growing up, I realized that the only thing which I would have done better way was uh, not taking my parents for granted and the way I'm loving them right now, I would have given those love better in my childhood days or have initiated it earlier because now at this point of time I'm realizing their problems and their uh, uh, how uh, their importance uh, I mean their importance and so uh, if I would get a chance to change this I would probably uh, give them more happiness I would initiate I would uh, start giving happiness to them uh, since my childhood that's a very good answer. Yeah. So now we have uh, Dr. Ali with us. Yeah, go ahead with your answer, Dr. Ali. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, what I would say that I, I appreciate everything that has happened in my life. And I think everything that has happened, it, uh, it made a good effect or a bad effect on me, but that gave me the opportunity to, to improve myself. But but one, one incident that I regret or I would think that I would do it differently that my big sister was complaining of uh, a disc problem and she had to go to undergo surgery. This happened during my first year of medical school and I was overloaded with uh, studying for the exams and lectures and everything. So I chose to, to just focus on my academic performance rather than being with her and accompanying her to the, to the doctor's appointment and the workup. Unfortunately, she, she made it and she, she went through the surgery and she's doing fine. But this is something that when I, when I, when I reflect back on it, especially when I, when I started going to the clinics and seeing how much a minor illness will affect a patient and how much like uh, those patients need any family support, I feel that I've let down my sister and uh, I would definitely do, do a different uh, approach if I if I were ever to encounter something like this, thank you. That's a very very good and heart touching answer. Yeah, Doctor Anjali, you want to tell something? You just raise your hand, or it's from the previous answer. 
Can I say yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, if I could go back in time, I don't think I would want to change anything in my past because all these experiences still now uh, made me who I am today. And, uh, you know, the mistakes or the regrets have all been a learning experience for me. And as they say, it's the hard knocks in life, you know, that soften our, soften our rough edges. I don't think you know, uh, I would want to, you know, change anything. That's again a perfect answer. Like everybody shouldn't, everybody doesn't have a like experience to change in their life. That's a very good answer. Yeah. So anybody else wants to, yeah, Dr. Anjali, you can raise your hands again. Anybody? I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Anjali. It was by mistake. No, I haven't raised. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, Sorry, yeah. to yeah. answer the question, go ahead, please. Yeah, please. I would like to answer the question. Okay. Um, if I would have a chance to go to the past, I would go to the early years of my medical school where I, I invested most of my time in studies uh, without giving myself time for enjoying. So, I would go and have fun and studies together. I would change that. Yeah, I think most of us think like this now. Nice <laughs> answer. Kuludia, go ahead with your answer. Yeah, if I would have like to change anything in my life, I would change my perspective towards the life itself when I was young and newly, you know, in the college teenager, I was very materialistic and I used to be uh, very into the, you know, all the materials branded stuff. But with time, I realized the importance of, uh, um, you know, uh, what is the real richness and uh, the richness is that we, um, the true richness lies in the meaningful relationships, experiences and sense of purpose and empathy. So I'm more empathetic towards everyone now and I feel uh, more pleasure and um, more pleasure when I'm like um, with the, when I deal with the real stuff now, I'm less focused on the materialistic uh, things now and I'm more centered on the treasures that bring genuine uh, joy and fulfillment towards the life. And that's how I have uh, changed myself. And uh, I wish I would have changed myself as being a teenager. But yeah, that things happen with life. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Anybody else wants to answer? Like today we covered three questions. So yeah, that's good. Tomorrow we'll again take up three questions. And like this, in the same way, everybody, we can just answer and you know, learn even a new perspectives. And we can just work on our answers as well. Anybody else wants to answer? Yes, I want Go to ahead. talk about it. Go ahead. Go ahead um, so the thing uh, I, I wanted to change back is um, during, uh, uh, like when I came back to US, I didn't pay attention to my uh, health. Uh, my husband uh, has to go and undergo like surgery. I have to take care of him. I just completely forgotten everything. Just focus on the finances, manage the finances, manage the house, take care of my in-laws, take care of my husband. And eventually, I didn't pay attention to my back. My back was, was hurting, hurting. And eventually, the, when I visited the neurologist, he said that you have a sciatica and you have a disc prolapse. So uh, when uh, this is one of the thing, if I had done exercise, if I had not put on the weight, um, I would definitely be not suffering from the pain till till today. Um, I take painkillers. Um, yeah. So I think that is one of the thing I wanted to change in my life if I had to. Perfect. perfect yeah. Can I mention this or this, it would look bad on my, uh, my presentation? So I have one problem. Uh, I would like to give feedback on this Don't because... As there are millions of people and, you know, thousands of people applying and there are a lot of residents like right, right now they are searching for people who are very, you know, uh, sporty mm -hmm. and their mm -hmm. health is perfect. So they mm -hmm. don't get, uh, you know, um, frequent mm -hmm. or frequent days. I understand that the workload and then this pressure, can you, are you able to handle so it? The next question will be that. Your answer to something else, because this uh -huh. is reflect your health overall. Yeah, I mm -hmm. would suggest Hmm. Okay. Okay. I understand. 
Uh, yeah, you can just take the answer like Dr. Khalid mentioned. You can just come up with something else. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, anybody else wants to answer this question before we end the meeting or we can end the meeting right now? So uh, can somebody, uh, we, I've shared the list in both the groups, like of the questions, uh, you can just come, you can even post the questions, three questions you can, you want uh, to be discussed tomorrow. We can just discuss those questions. Likewise, we'll be able to cover a lot of questions in you know few days and yeah, we can prepare our answers as well as after that. So you can just post the questions in the group and oh, we can just discuss them in the upcoming meetings. So uh, uh, should um, I end the meeting or anybody else wants to answer, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I want to share my question in the interview. I forgot yesterday I, and I remembered it. Uh, I was asked that if you, if your house suddenly got into fire, what will you do? And what are the three things you, you will save? Yeah, that was my question. I forgot yesterday, so I thought of sharing it. Okay, perfect. So, well, one thing, uh, so I'll just post this question in the group, and tomorrow this is the first question we'll discuss, apart from the other two questions. So, anyways, I'll end the uh, chat. Anybody else wants to answer, or should I end the chat? I think everybody's leaving as well. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh... Uh, it's not a question actually, but I missed the earlier two sessions. So I just wanted to request, can we discuss the question? What are your top three weaknesses and strengths tomorrow? Perfect. Like we have discussed these questions. If somebody wants to talk about the weakness and strengths, you can definitely talk about that. As Thank well. you so much. We do like... Uh, and, uh, but Aishman, we can tell everybody that we have the links on the group for the past sessions. So it would be easy for you to go over them. Yeah. So you can even go over the link. Uh, you, But we won't allow everybody to answer that question. Yeah, for one minute, you can talk about the strengths and weaknesses for sure. And we can give the feedback. Otherwise, you can just go to the past link. And yeah, as it will, you can just watch the videos there. Like We have discussed these multiple times. Okay. Oh, thank you. Have suggestion if that's okay with you guys um yeah. the links that you posted on youtube like how we discussed these three questions today would it be possible for you for the upcoming um sessions would it be possible for you to state what was discussed during the zoom um call meeting okay. that way it's better to like guide everyone um who wants to you know touch upon the previous session I don't upload it on YouTube. It's Dr. Surya who does it for us. So he's doing a fantastic job. So Dr. Surya, can you just make sure that you write in the caption the questions that we discussed? So it will be easier for everybody to figure out like what were the questions that were discussed. Thank you so much. Right. He'll just he'll just post and it'll be it'll be you know easy for everybody. Like even if you have time, you can just in the previous videos, you can just mention the questions uh, in the video yes. as well. Because so I have also like since yesterday and i'm also gonna watch previous videos yeah thank you yeah yeah so dr surya if you get time you can just do that and yeah i'll end the meeting and tomorrow we'll discuss these uh, questions uh like one dr nisha told and the other two questions we can just uh, discuss later on in the group or tomorrow we can just go through that list and immediately come up with that question and the uh, doctor as you mentioned you want to talk about this uh, your strength and weakness you can definitely give your answer and you can get a feedback from anybody who wants to talk about that otherwise we won't be discussing that question because it's discussed many a times but uh, you can definitely go ahead with your answer tomorrow we would love to listen to your answer so anyways thank you so much everybody for joining have a good day or ahead day or night depending on your time zones and tomorrow we'll meet at the same time thank you so much for joining okay. thank you guys bye Bye-bye.